Cosmoscope, this sculpture and this um, software system and this lighting array is a culmination of, I would say, decades of really thinking about what the cosmos is, all the various bits of the cosmos. It's, it is, in a sense, a kind of trying to put it all together in a coherent system. You could almost think about it as a kind of loose coalition of artists, scientists and psychologists who are really interested in these existential ideas. I think it's overlooked how creative a, a discipline science is. As a design structural engineer, I uh, sort of have lived between two worlds, the world of art and the world of science. My pushing process here was all about let's actually build a container for mathematical and organic ideas that we can throw stuff into and then kind of curate that and lift out the ones that we think resonate with the kind of concepts. What does it mean to think about yourself, not in terms of your gender, sexuality, ethnic identity, or social networks, what does it mean to think about yourself alone, naked, in front of this vastness? The interesting thing about this project is, it is that, that it's scaleless, so it's a prototype model of the structure of the universe, uh, but also of the structure of the atom. You see these patterns in the, in the piece, and the patterns are repeated on smaller and smaller scales. And that's just like we see in the universe, that we see a pattern on the biggest scale. And then as you zoom in, that pattern gets repeated and you realize a small piece is actually looking quite like a bigger piece viewed from further away. And that's a remarkable thing about the cosmos. I've never been satisfied just to look at things. I've always wanted to take them apart and see how they work and, and what's inside them. And of course, one of the problems with just observing with astronomy is you can't do that. You can see a distant object, but you can't take it apart. So uh, I started a, on a program of numerical simulations, trying to simulate the cosmos. And we've now, after about 20 years, succeeded in making a cosmos that looks very like our own. The way I saw this piece being was essentially taking those basic software ideas are making it 3D rather than 2D. Start with mathematics and you end up with things like clouds and oceans and fire and so on. And there are ways of kind of starting with simple mathematical formulae and building things that kind of emerge as looking organic or indistinguishable from organic. We, we have in the sculpture the, the very small, the human scale and the very large. And you think there's almost a sort of continuum between each of those different domains. My role on the project was to provide a scientific input so that kind of brought me into the, the human scale. But I guess what I find particularly interesting is that the human scale right in the middle is quite a unique set of phenomena that occur. So complexity massively rises at this kind of scale that we occupy. So we have these incredibly complex organs in our head, our brains are the most complex structures that we know of in the entire universe. Those scales we also worked on in terms of time and how that time unfolded over the course of the actual project, modelling on a cosmological clock, um, similar to the clocks that we found up in Durham and also the, in the Galileo Museum in Florence and places like that, so that the idea of time unfolded. Well, I think there's, uh, like Vitruvius and many others after him, uh, sort of were looking for proportions and, uh, you know, um, ratios between uh, uh, which you know extend from the human body to music to other a aspects of the world um, this piece does represent that you know it is a fractal geometry and uh, it relates both to the human scale at this scale of about three meters in diameter uh, but you know it could be scaled up it could be a structure for uh, an infrastructure or for colonizing the universe 